What's up, noodleheads? Today, I'm doing a Florida-inspired bowl, Gator Ramen. Let's get right into it. I was able to find Gator at my local meat market in Tampa. Shout out to Heights Meat Market. I've never cooked with Gator before, but I know it tastes pretty good. I've got some Gator ribs here, and I will use this for the base for the soup. I'm just splitting them in half and going to soak them for about 30 minutes in cool water. I don't think this is necessary, but I did it to extract any off flavors or blood. I know that gator can sometimes be a little swampy. I experimented with a chintan and a pintan, which if you remember from my last videos, chintan means clear soup and pintan means thick soup. The only difference is a little bit in preparation and cooking time. I'm also going to be using gator sausage. Let's see how long it takes me to open the package. Yep, just a couple more try. Okay, yep, let's, let's give that a quick cut right there. Nope, okay, let's, one more cut. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so I'm just gonna give this a quick chop so I can crisp up the pieces and use the oil from it. Time to start with the gator tail. I started off by drying it off really thoroughly and cutting it up into bite-sized pieces for frying. I'm reserving a few larger pieces for sous vide, which I'll be putting in a separate bag with the same marinade. I've had some regular fried gator before that was pretty tasty, but what isn't good fried? For every element of this bowl, I wanted it to resemble something of Florida, so these gator fritters had to stand out. To ensure they got super crispy, I made sure to dry it off really well and cut it into nice pieces, hoping that they would still be juicy. I had to go with a classic Cigar City Brewing Tampa style lager, maybe a third to half of the can for both containers. I wanted to go heavy on the Key West lime juice to really brighten the flavor up. And lastly, I'm adding a good portion of homemade Cajun seasoning to give it a little kick. This may be a little more Cajun than Florida, but it's close enough, right? After the sausage has cooled a bit, I'm chopping some of it up finely to use for topping while reserving the oil for later. After the gator ribs have soaked, fill the pots back up with fresh water and put on high heat. For the chintan, I'm adding half an onion, a quarter of an orange, five cloves of garlic, celery and carrots, dried porcini mushrooms, a few bay leaves, and some of the gator sausage. This is going to go on a simmer for about eight hours. For the python, I'm adding some gator sausage as well as a couple chicken wings to get a better emulsion. The python will be on high heat for about five hours. Now the gator tail is going to go in water set to 155 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. Next I'll be making a beer batter from the marinade for the gator tail, but to compensate for the dilution of flavor because of flour, I'm adding some more beer, lime juice, and Cajun seasoning. There's not really an exact measurement to get the correct beer batter consistency, so just add flour until it forms a thin batter that can still coat whatever you stick in there. Be 
Before frying, make sure the frying oil is about 350 degrees Fahrenheit and fry them in batches. Otherwise, the temperature will drop too much and will result in less crispy fritters. Now it's time to cool the sous vide gator tail down before slicing. For the aroma oil, I'm using the gator sausage oil and infusing it with orange oil from the skin. When you're transferring the oil from the pan into a jar, don't forget to spill everywhere when you're straining. Now for the tare, time to get a little Florida crazy. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Two shots of tequila. <laughs> don't worry, the alcohol will be cooked off. Unless you don't want to cook it and you want a shot of tequila in your ramen, which is totally okay if you want to do it that way. Uh, I'll also be adding two ounces of white vinegar, a quarter cup of kombu water, just some kombu, which is the Japanese kelp that's been soaked in water overnight, a quarter cup of mushroom stock, I'm using chicken of the woods here, 70 grams of kosher salt, and two tablespoons of local Tampa honey, and a quarter cup of local Tampa wine. And now, I'm going to be slicing up the gator tail. I was really skeptical of how this was going to turn out. I've never really heard of sous vide gator tail. Usually it's something that you need to fry in some way or another to get a good taste out of it. But it was actually really tender and juicy. I had to do some hand cut noodles for this bowl to match the ruggedness. The last 30 minutes of the python, I'm adding about half an onion, a couple cloves of garlic, one leek, just the white parts, some ginger, and some arbol dried chilies for some spice. Now that the soup is done, I'm just going to practice pouring, knowing it isn't going to be pretty. So again, don't forget, this is a very important step guys, don't forget to spill your soup on the table when you are straining it. It was better than last time. This bowl turned out very tasty, and a lot better than expected. I didn't get to film any of the chintan broth in action, but it wasn't bad. Although the flavor was okay, I think I went a little heavy on aromatics for the soup. But it doesn't help that gator is a really different meat. My favorite part was definitely the fritters. I actually ate the rest of them just by themselves. The orange oil also didn't really taste or smell like orange, which I think was due to the sausage oil being so overwhelming. I was really looking forward to the orange oil, and hopefully I'll give it another try. The egg, which I didn't really touch on much, was marinated in a modified version of the tare and tasted a bit strange. Didn't really soak all the way through the egg white. I'm not sure if I'd make gator ramen again, but I had a lot of fun making it. Itadakimasu.